These are my tools to create awesome PS3 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. In today's video tutorial, this is more of a quick refresher course on what to do if you have an E3 flasher, PS3 Slim, running uh, 4.83 OFW, and it is compatible with E3 Flasher and is a NOR chip model. So if you want a dedicated tutorial, more intricate tutorial on how to take apart the PS3, how to apply to E3 Flasher, and all those nitty gritty details, I will have a link to inside the video description of a previous video that goes into all of that in the past. But today's video is just more of a quick highlight so that if you have those tools, you have the PS3, this is a quick reminder of what to do basically. So let's do this. So recently I had a PS3 Slim. It was running 4.83. It's a CECH 2001B model. So it is definitely E3 Flasher compatible. And I took apart the PS3. And uh, this is what I ended up doing here. So here's my motherboard. I got the fan. I got the power supply in the back. Here's my E3 Flasher. So as a quick crash course in the steps of what to do with the E3 Flasher, basically make sure you have your update file. If you haven't have it already before for the E3 Flasher. You have your 1, 2 switch down and your 3, 4, 5, 6 switch up. Insert your micro SD that has that update file. Turn the PS3 on. And then what you'll see, if everything is good with your clip on the motherboard, is all these lights will basically illuminate and you're, you'll be good to go. And then what you can do next is you can press the reset button and then these blue lights here will start alternating back and forth. If you want to double check that the E3 flasher has taken your, your update, what you can do is take your micro SD, put it like in an adapter, plug into your computer, and uh, the card should be blank. If it is, good job. Put the micro SD back into E3 flasher. And what you can do next is in this next picture here, what I have here, you have switch one, two down, switch three is up, four, five, six is down, and then you press the start button here, and then what happens is you'll see a um, the sequence of the blue LEDs lighting up from left to right, and it takes about two minutes or so, and once that is successful, then you get the blue lights blink blinking or flashing back and forth, back and forth. If in the case you get like some red LEDs that turn on, then that means you got a bad um, bad connection possibly. Hopefully your cable, you didn't you know, nick the cable or something like that. So, so you want to do that. What I like to do, I like to do that three times here. So on my computer, which I'll get to a little bit later on, I have three dumps and I'll show you how to verify the dumps and how to patch a dump and put it back on. So, so the last step here is um, using the tools, you create a, let's assume you have a good dump, you patch the dump, it's good. You rename the file, um, you put it back on your micro SD, put it back onto the E3 flasher, press the reset button, and then you want all switches down, and then you press the start button. And then this process takes about eight minutes. So each LED takes about two minutes to light up roughly, but the whole process takes about eight minutes. Once you get to the very end here, then the lights will start um, blinking or flashing left and right, left and right, you're good to go. You can shut everything down. I like to add new thermal paste, put everything back together. And then you'll have on a USB thumb drive, you'll have like in this case, we'll have the 4.83 CFW Ferox. And you'll have that in the PS3 slash update slash PS3 up dat dot pop. That's the name of the file. And that's how that file structure works on your USB. So that's a quick refresher course on that whole E3 flasher process there. Um, let me go over tools real quick of how to do this. So... If I go into my PS3 dumps here, I have you know a dump one, basically, a dump two, a dump three. So the dump is going to be a bkpps3.bin. And there's many tools that you can use to uh, verify your dumps. One program is hxden. So running this program real quick here, what you can do is you can go to analysis, file compare, compare, and you can compare the two dumps or the, the three dumps, basically. So... If I go back up and I go to my dumps, let's select my first dump here, and then the second dump is number here, number two, select it, and say okay. The chosen files are identical, great. And then as an extra, just in case, you can compare, let's say the third dump. So I'll get to the third dump, compare. That's good. Another check you can also do is using another program called NOR Inspector. And I have a link in the video description for all these tools. So you run the NOR Inspector, and then what you can do is go to one of your dumps, let's say the first dump, drag into the NOR inspector all the way, 
And then as I have some information here, go to the status tab, all this stuff should be green, which it is, that's great. Last but not least, now we use a program called uh, PS3 Dump Checker. So you run this program and we just continue like so. And then if you want to, you can update the program by pressing the down arrow over here and download the latest CFG, download the latest hash list, and then you can also download the latest PS3 dump checker just in case. So now what you can do in this, in this program is you just take one of your dumps. So let's take the first dump here, drag and drop it. It's gonna go through all its checks. And what you want is all this stuff to be green. It's gonna say a big okay down here. You say yes to patch the image, and then you're good to go. So now what you do, is um, here I have an example. So the previous file was called bkpps3 underscore patch dot bin. All you gotta do is take that file, put it on your micro SD on the root and rename it as uh, this file here, basically bkpps3 dot bin, put that on your micro SD card, put it back into E3 flasher, all the switches are down, press start and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it for that flashing process. That's probably the hardest part really is getting good dumps, verify the dumps, patch dumps okay and then um, I think that's about it for this first half of the video and then to round off the second half of this video what we're gonna do is do a quick showcase of um, installing the 4.83 Ferox on my PS3 so with that said let's go straight into the next portion of this video tutorial let's do this all right so here we are on my PS3 so let's do this so first thing is let's just go to system settings and I can show you guys that this particular PS3 is running 4.83 OFW and if I go all the way to the far right we'll see that there is no homebrew installer or package manager or anything like that so I'll go to system update I have my USB thumb drive plugged in I got the Ferox file on there and um, if my system was not flash I could not get this far because eventually it will error out but so far things are looking good um, no errors and it's gonna continue with this installation process this will take uh, a couple minutes, so what I will do for sake of time is most likely just sort of fast forward to the good stuff. All right, so the firmware installation is complete. So once the PS3 reboots, we'll see a brand new uh, home screen basically. It has say the Ferox on the right hand side with the Cobra, there you go, awesome. And for kicks, let's just go to system settings or systems information and see what the firmware says. And it's going to say 4.83, um, as we can see here. But that's okay because we go to the right hand side. We have the new package manager, which was not there before. And I'm just going to install some random homebrew apps or package files that I have on my USB thumb drive. So that's today's PS3 tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.